can you build a business from your passion? I'm sure you've all heard the saying, if you find your passion, you'll never have to work another day in your life. It's an alluring story, isn't it? But is it true? Is it a fool's errand to follow your passion? Can you actually make money doing something you love? We'll find out. What would it take to become the hero of your own life? To build the business you've always dreamt of? To make money doing something you love? It's time to take control. Can we get on with making money and having fun now? I'm not doing it if it's not fun. Join the rebellion with Alan Donegan and welcome to Rebel Entrepreneur. On today's episode, I am very excited to have with me Mr. Sean McHugh, one of the trainers at Pop Up. Hello, Sean. Good morning, Alan. This is Sean from America. Yes. And as you can probably tell, I'm Alan from England and the United Kingdom. I don't want to leave out the other nationalities. Uh, and we also have Kelly Hardwick, Femme Fatale, with us. Hello, everyone. Derby UK, represent. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kelly, tell us, uh, just so that everyone knows, what exactly is it you do at the moment? So, I am a full-time airsoft and tactical kit content creator. So, I do blog posts, Instagram, um, YouTube. I've got a magazine, an online magazine, and also a podcast, which I'm about to get back off the ground. It's a whole yeah. lot of things. For those of us who, who are, aren't familiar, can you tell us what Airsoft is? Yes, of course. So Airsoft is a war gaming sport, a bit like paintball. So we all dress up in camo. We have toy guns that um, shoot six and BBs. There's going to be very many people mad that I call them toy guns, but Ooh. Here, Ooh. here we are. That's what they are. Um, and basically, we run around abandoned warehouses and woods. And yeah, we shoot at each other. <laughs> Yes, and uh, <laughs> Kelly and Henry, who work for Pop Up, actually organised for my brother's birthday to take me and my brother to an abandoned shopping mall. And that was one of the most painful days of my life. I got shot in the neck. I don't know if it was you who shot me in the neck, Kelly. Um, Let's just go with that. Kelly shot Alan in the neck. Yeah. Yes, and uh, that developed into a rather large red spot for the next two weeks of my life. But it was a fun day. It's such a laugh. I really enjoy it. <laughs> when was that? Was that a recent birthday? It was a couple of years ago for my brother's years, birthday. Yeah. We oh, had yeah. a huge yeah. amount of fun. Yes, huge amount of fun. But there's a reason we invited you on this show, Kelly. There's a reason we wanted to do this with you. But let's start with, can you build a business from passion? I'd love to know both of your opinions. Can you build a business based out of your passion? Have you seen it happen? Have you done it? Have you experienced it? I would like to say that, yes, you can build a business from something you're passionate about because I've done it. But if you ask me if passion was the only thing you needed, I'd say absolutely not. You need a lot of grit, a lot of determination because passion... Is that going to keep you going when things get really rough? Yes? No? It's an element. For so sure. What, what specifically are you passionate about, Kelly? Shooting boys in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello, Kelly. I'm Sean. Hello there. <laughs> so in my business, I think what I'm most passionate about, I think I really like dressing up and I like all the kit and I like just, you know, getting it all together. <laughs> and honestly, shooting people with a ball bearings is also really really fun because <laughs> they get back up and you don't get arrested so that's great uh i don't like being shot myself but it's all part of the game i guess so tell me about the dressing up part how did how did that become because i've seen <laughs> i've seen some of your kit and you know that is your your model i guess or what would you call that your brand or um, uh, the femme fatale like you know your muzzle the different knee pads the outfit you wear i mean i know there's amazing amount of stuff that people buy and use while they're playing airsoft i have so i've designed my own line of gear that i want to get off the ground soon enough but it's about making time um i started playing in a pair of leggings and a very tight jacket and with bb <laughs> if you play in tight clothing um it doesn't take any of the power away from the bb when it hits your body so that hurts a lot <laughs> so after that i was like i'm just gonna buy some mtp like old army trousers put them on and after that i was like this looks sick I need something else. <laughs> so that's like buying more and more things. And now, as you can see, you can actually see that clothing wrap behind me, right? Yes. <laughs> yes, we can. Those are the ones, those are the ones I wear. That's your gear? That's some of it. My main gear. The rest of it's under my bed and over there and there. I'm a mess. And I embrace it. <laughs> <laughs> how, how did you get into it? 
So I first played Airsoft in 2011. One of my friends, one of my girl mates was like, hey, so there's this sport. My boyfriend plays it. It's like Call of Duty in real life. And I was like, oh, I'm pretty good at Call of Duty. Uh, yeah, let's do it. And, and I went and it was one of the worst days of my life. It was cold. It was rainy. I got shot in the face with no face. Bro. I've still got a scar, actually. I, got, I dropped a gun in the mud. I was wearing this big bulky plate carrier. I looked a hot mess. And after that, I was like, you know what? This is not for me. I'm over it. Uh, and then three years later, my boyfriend at the time was like, hey, I want to play S off my birthday. And I was like, only if you buy me this gun. It was a bright pink gun. And I was like, he's never going to do it. I'm safe. I've, I've done myself really good here. And then it turned up at my house. <laughs> so I was like, OK, I've got to go now. And we went and it was in the summer. So playing outdoors wasn't a problem. It wasn't cold. It wasn't muddy. It wasn't mm. terrible. I wore face protection. So my face didn't get shot. That was great. And I also was wearing proper clothing. <laughs> so it was what did your What did your kit look like this time? Now, how did you change your fashion on this one? Um, so in the first game, I was wearing the leggings. Yeah. The second game, I was wearing a pair of like combat trousers, a combat top, and a plate carrier, which took away most of the shots from the top off my body. Quite what, is, what is a plate carrier? <laughs> uh, so a plate carrier is a tactical vest that carries um, armored plates in. We use them for airsoft, but we just don't use. Well, some people use the plates. <laughs> I'm not about running around with like 10 kilograms worth of weight on my chest, to be honest. So I just put foam plates in. It bulks out, so it looks nice. Um, and it, <laughs> obviously, if, it, if, you get, if you get shot, then it just kind of pings off and you don't get a shot in the, in the side of your boob. You know what I mean? Not once that. <laughs> not once that. <laughs> that makes sense. So let me get this right. Even if you lose, you win because you look the best. Yes. It's a fashion Excellent. show. Yes. <laughs> I think that is a part of it. Yeah, that is a it's part really of it. Fun. It's really fun. Like the fact you can just go to one game day and be one faction and the next day you can go and be something else and <laughs> you can just swap between them. You can even take two kits on the same day and just swap them out and then do two massive photo shoots and swap teams. I think it's great. I, I love it. it. I love it. And <laughs> if people, awesome. one of the things I love about Kelly is her Instagram account with the pictures. Kelly, if people wanted to see these outfits and the photos and what you're wearing, where do they go? You can go to uh, Instagram.com forward slash Femfatal Airsoft or just go onto the app and search at Femfatal Airsoft and you'll be able to see um, me as a toy soldier. <laughs> 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 it's, it's worth it. Honestly, it's worth it. <laughs> Sounds mental. So what I wanted to say was actually one of the things that inspired us at Pop-Up in the very early days was Gary Vaynerchuk. And it was Gary Vaynerchuk's wine business that inspired us. And here's a guy, like he was incredibly passionate about wine and he launched a YouTube channel where he filmed himself tasting and reviewing wines. He then promoted online and built this incredible channel. It took him 18 months to build but in 18 months, he went from zero to 149,000 followers on Twitter, and his daily wine show was unbelievably successful. And that really struck me that if you can make money drinking and reviewing wine on YouTube, what else is possible? And I think that became a core fundamental principle of pop-up is uncover your passion, find out what you're into. I don't care what it is, Lego, pizza, skydiving, airsoft, woodworking, doesn't matter what it is, there's a way to make money doing what you love. And if you do that, it doesn't feel as much like hard work. There's always going to be elements, it doesn't feel as much as hard work. Now, I'd love to know, that was the core story for pop-up. And then we've been around uh, the world now, inspiring people. You came to a pop-up, Kelly, and hung out with us. And so that core fundamental principle that you can make money doing something you love, how true do you think that is? And how has that played out for you? I think it's absolutely true, because I know someone who sells Smurf memorabilia on the internet. They sell it on eBay. Smurf memorabilia? You mean mm -hmm. the little blue things? The little blue things, yeah. They sell T-shirts. They design T-shirts get them made up and then they sell them on ebay so i think it's definitely true with me i didn't think it was possible i was just doing this for fun because i was like you know i've got there's nothing out there for women right now i'm 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 a lady i mean yeah yes you are i don't i don't dress like agreed. one all the time agreed but, <laughs> but, agreed yeah. so i was like oh i should do something and then it wasn't until i went to pop up that i was like i could actually quit my job and do this 
And uh, yeah, I think you can do it with anything, anything. I'd be willing to try it anyway. What was the job that you quit? So I was a customer services manager at a fencing company. A fence as in? Sword fighting? Not, not as in sword, yeah, sword <laughs> no, fighting? Uh, <laughs> no, as in security fencing. <laughs> Oh, but it, let, let's change that. It'd be a lot cooler if you were sword fighting and then went to gunplay. I was sword fighting. Absolutely. <laughs> How did you feel about that job? So I've done a lot of different jobs in my lifetime. Um, I've worked Tesco's a lot, a grocery store. I've been a checkout person, a delivery driver. I've fit children's shoes. After the, the whole delivery driver thing, I was a social media manager. Made sense, that one. But the fencing job, I don't know. I was going to work like every day and you just sat there and you're like, I'm working really hard to make someone else's dream happen. And I'm working really hard to earn them money. Why aren't I working this hard on my own dreams? Because I'm not. I'm sat here working for them. And then I get home. I know I know Gary V. He's, you know, he's, a, he's a god. I know he says you, your nine to five is your money maker. And then your six to 12 is your hustle. I'm like, I can't do that. I'm tired. I need to lie down. I need a nap. So I was like, nah. As soon as I went to pop up. Alan made me join in. I didn't want to. I sat at the back for most of it. I remember that. And Alan's like, come forward. And I'm like, I don't want to. I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone was super nice though. But then I think it was the week after I came back because I stayed in Reading for two weeks. I came back and I went. I actually went into work. I printed out my resignation letter on their printer and their paper and then handed it to them in the boardroom. <laughs> I'm a terrible human being. Yeah, I, I disagree. Myself. I love that. <laughs> It was savage, but... So what what was the turning point on that? So you went to the pop-up class. Was it a one week or a two week? Two weeks. So I sent, okay. So I live three hours north of Reading, but I, uh, I stayed in oh, Reading wow. two weeks, yeah. And genuinely, the turning point was, I think me and Alan had worked on a business plan for a company, and we prepared it, and we sent it off to them, and they said, not right now, but maybe later. And I was like, oh, okay, so it's a no, but it's not a flat no. I was like, if that's not a flat note, then maybe we could get something going. And I prepared another proposal, sent it to another company. And they're like, yeah, how much do you want? And I was like, uh, uh, Alan, Alan, how much do I want? And you said, you actually said, make a price and then double it. And I was like, sound, let's do that. And I was like, this price. They're like, yeah, OK. I was like, what? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> yeah. So you so you you asked. Just asked. Just asked. Mm. Oh. How did that feel? Um, I'm I'm not really used to asking for things. I feel rude doing it. And then as soon as I did that, I was like, oh, people aren't saying no. Maybe I should ask some more. And I started asking more and started getting more back. And I was like, maybe Alan was right about the whole, you don't get if you don't ask. Maybe I should just ask more. (laughs) Maybe Alan was right. Maybe my mum was right. (laughs) Maybe. (laughs) So how did that feel when they said, yeah, okay, let's let's do this. And what were you asking for? So basically I was asking for um, paid reviews. I've been reviewing their kit for free and then I eventually decided to ask them for like some monetary compensation as long with the products. Then when they said yes on the phone, I threw my phone across the room at the fencing job. I was in one of their spare offices and then I had to go run and pick up my phone. And then I rang Henry and I was like, I did it. And he's like, yes. I'm like, yes, I don't know what to do. Here's my resignation, I guess. <laughs> so it was that quick. It was I got the phone call and then you typed out your resignation <laughs> right there. I handed it in the next day. I wasn't that savage. Okay. That, that's still pretty savage. So what gave you confidence that that was going to work? And you were like, hey, this is, I'm doing it. I Where realized, did that come from? So I realized I've always had a backup plan. There was no backup plan this time. If it didn't work, then I was going to be destitute and maybe on the streets. Well, not, no, my mom and dad would have taken me back, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I decided there was no backup plan, so it had to work. So why, why did you feel confident then? No, oh, no, I didn't. I was terrified. You're terrified. Okay. Terrified. And what, what made this different between when you had a backup plan before? I mean, coming home with your dad being like, what actually have you done? And me being like, Ugh, living my best life. I don't know. <laughs> how, did, how did, you, how did your dad, your mom and dad feel about that? Were uh, they supportive of it or was it? No. no. Okay. No. So, <laughs> so what did they say? So self-employment isn't really a, where I, where I come from in sort of the community I grew up in, self-employment's not a big thing because it's not secure as a normal job. I mm-hmm. believe it's more secure than a normal job because I know how hard I can work. Obviously, big companies go bust all the time. That's my view on it. But I came home and I was like, I quit my job. Big grin. Mum and dad were like, what have you, without, this is without saying, what have you done? And I was like, I quit my job. Yes. And I was, I was really happy with myself because I was like, this is the best thing I've ever done in my life. Uh, my dad was not so happy with me. 
But I think the longer it went on, because obviously I didn't have a normal job and I started earning money and I wasn't like asking him for money or anything like that. I think he was like, oh, actually, do you know what? That's pretty good. And I started getting um, awards and things. And he's like, and then he used to go to work and just be like, oh, my daughter does this. Look at her. And he used to go on his phone and be like, look at all these pictures. My mum still doesn't get it. My mum thinks I write on about fashion on the internet. It's fine. <laughs> I sell clothes. It's okay. <laughs> In a way, you do sell clothes. Yeah. True. True that. True that. Yeah. <laughs> so when you when you were going to your job at fencing, mm-hmm. at the yeah. fencing uh, company, right? Was there? Uh, as, as Alan was asking, was there any sense of? passion with that did you enjoy doing the job when you woke up in the morning what was the first thing that came to your mind the alarm goes off and then what do you think oh shit i've got to go to work mm. that was it um, okay it was do you know what it wasn't a bad job i sat in an office all day and i spoke to customers on the phone about why they'd install their fences wrong to be honest because most of my customer service queries were the fact they'd put their fences in upside down <laughs> <sighs> I'm not even I wish I was kidding but I'm not even kidding um <laughs> I don't know there was no passion there I was just kind of sat there like this is just a day job this is just money this fund the money I earn from this funds what I do at the weekend like allows me to buy better guns and better kit and yeah. pay for flights to go and do things I'm like this is it's not my jam at all I'm not passionate about it especially yeah. when they ask you to build a fence and you're just like I'd rather I'd rather not <laughs> I'd rather not rather not i'd rather shoot you something like that yeah i'd rather yeah. just sit in sit in the office and just uh watch you guys build a bed so, <laughs> so i had a situation like this myself um so my first job out of university was i was basically a administrative assistant for a film production company i wanted to create write and produce and direct my own films and what I basically was doing, uh, uh, we'll, we'll use foul language on this one. I was an office bitch, right? Yeah. I filed stuff <laughs> and I would wake up in the morning and my alarm clock would go off. You know, like I just had that upset feeling in my, you know, like in my stomach. I was like, ah. starting my day like that was just horrible because although I was involved somewhat in the field of what I was doing, I was not doing anything that I had any excitement or any drive or any passion about. And I think it's really hard to get through days when you don't have that get up in the morning and man, I want to do this in some way. And I think as you were talking earlier in the beginning of when we were were speaking, it was like, Hey, you, you need more than passion, but when things got tough and I'm sure over and how long have you been doing airsoft stuff now for yourself? Um, I would like to say three years. Three years. Okay. Like so I'm years. sure there's been some bumps in the road. Yes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Okay. So what gave you the ability to come back from those bumps where say in the fence job <laughs> or the Tesco job, when you hit a low point, sometimes it's hard to come out of that yeah. low point. All right. So what, what was that? What was the feeling? What was the idea? I'm trying to get at to some degree of the passion, but I, we use the word passion. I was like, well, passion, what does that mean? Yeah. So can you tell what that means for you within the world of airsoft and how that got you through the questions of, well, you don't do these businesses yourself. You have to have a proper job yeah. and you, you can't make money from, from doing something you like. That's not allowed. Work is supposed to be hard and yeah. suck, right? That's mm-hmm. how it is. So can you give me some context to what that looks like when things go a little rough and you're like, wow, I really like doing this. I'm going to get through. Does that make sense? Yes. So with the old jobs, it was always, um, if there was a bump, it would always be, well, it's secure and there's money at the end of it. As long as I'd put the hours in, there is money there. With this, I think feel like nothing is ever totally guaranteed. Like a company could not pay their invoice or something. But I don't know, I wake up every day now with the feeling of I get to do whatever I want, literally whatever I want, which is hard, actually, because I've got a very short attention span. So as you can probably tell, I've got many to do lists. But I don't know. It's like I get to do what I want. And with that freedom, it enables me to do things I actually care about. I don't care about fencing. I don't care about delivering groceries, to be quite honest. But what I do care about is I care about whether that plate carrier is going to fit around my body and I'm not going to get shot in the side of my tits. You know what I mean? (laughs) (laughs) Yes. That I care about. I care about whether I put that um, fanny pack on, whether I'm going to get shot in my soft gut. 
Um, I care about if I kneel down, am I going to get a BB in my knee because that's worse than stepping on Lego, quite honestly. I don't know. I care about these products and I care about how they affect me in games and I care about winning. Like, I think I'm really overly competitive about everything. Alan see me play airsoft. I'm overly competitive. I don't like losing. I don't want kit that's going to make me, that's going to slow me down or anything like that. So I think it's just kind of like, I want to win and be the best at this. So I, yeah, I need to find out. I'm curious about it as well. There's always more to find out. There's always more to test. There's new sites, there's new products. There's all these things. And I think the curiosity as well helps with the fact that if I have a, a crap day one day, I'll just be like, I do have a new gun in the office. Let me just go in the back garden and shoot that at some cans sorted. Do you have an example of that? Like saying, hey, I, have, I thought this deal was going to come through. This company was going to sponsor me. I was going to do that. And then it falls through. Well, how do you rebound from that? And what part does passion play? Okay. So um, I was negotiating a brand deal two years ago. And the company then said they didn't want to work with me because I was too fighty, too sweary and too feisty. And I was like, oh, and I know that's a very true statement because me and Alan have spoke about this before. And I was just like, oh, no. And that I took that really personally because I was like, that feels like a personal attack on my own personality, which I mean, it was. But I was like, oh, no. OK, right. Let's feel sad about it for like half an hour. Then I've got to be gangster. I've got to put my hair up. I've got to get a glass of wine or a coffee or something and then just keep going back at it. Because realistically, there's more fish in the sea. There's more out there. And there's brands out there that will align with your values, will align with your character and personality. And we just need to go out and find those. And I don't think you're probably ever going to get sponsorship from Lloyd's TSB or some kind of very traditional business. But there are plenty of businesses out there that share that energy, drive, passion for what you're doing. And it's about finding those brands that join in. So look, where I really wanted to go with this episode is to uncover your story and to find out for everyone else out there, if it is possible to build a business around your passion, how do you uncover it? How do you find out what is your passion, what excites you, where you're going? How do you discover this? Because it's very exciting. Like this is an alluring dream. I get to make money doing something I love. That sounds incredible. And we've been selling that at Pop Up for a long time. But let's get practical. What are the steps? I'd love to know what you think, Kelly. I'd love to know what Sean thinks of the steps. And yeah, how do you uncover that passion and get started? I think try a lot of things. Try everything. Try everything once. Try it twice if you're like me and you don't know if you like it the first time. But I think if you try a lot of things, then you get a more rounded worldview anyway, which is always a good thing to have. But then you also get to try different things and decide. You can narrow it down by what you like. Like, I know I don't like exercise. I hate it don't like it at all but put a gun in my hand and i get to run around some trees yeah sweet try everything once <laughs> <laughs> i love that and actually that's one of the riffs that i quite often do when talking to people is i use ice cream as the example i ask people do you like ice cream do you enjoy ice cream they always say yes well most people and then so well how do you know what your favorite flavor is you have try to it. try them. You have to. And if you're anything like me, you go to the supermarket and buy every flavor and try all <laughs> of them. And then you go, okay, the one I actually like is half baked. That's the flavor for me. Yeah. And then I go in hard and buy a lot of half baked. But you have to try it. And I think what you've just said is exactly the key. If you don't know what you're passionate about, if you don't know what sets you alive, what creates fire in your belly, what brings you to life, there's only one real way to try and that's get out there and try it whatever yeah. it is say yes to experiences say yes one of my favorite films i don't know if you've ever seen this is yes man have you seen that yep. film classic movie is actually a book originally and the book is excellent but it's about a guy who's become very negative and stays inside and he finds that life is slipping him by so he decides to say yes to everything Yes to the oligarch from Russia that's got a billion dollars to send him. Yes to the bride <laughs> on the internet. Yes to the event with friends. He says yes to literally everything, including the spam emails that come into his account. And oh, my it's a goodness. Very funny tale of how you can go out there to get experiences and actually uncover your true purpose. And I think people get so used to saying no to everything, they need to say yes a little bit more. Sean, what do you think on this passion thing? How do you uncover your passion? To me, 
passion and your environment are extremely closely linked. And what I mean by that is, so I'll give an example from my own life. I started my first business when I was 22 years old. Uh, It was a film production company. And the way I saw doing something you love or what I was taught growing up was you had to, it had to be a battle. It had to be hard. You had to work 90 hours a week and everything had yet a scratch and claw your way through. I didn't know anybody else who was an entrepreneur or had started their own business. As Kelly was kind of saying, most of the people that I was around growing up and my contemporaries and my peers and so forth, what you did was you went to school and you got, what is it, secondary school degree for the UK? Is that correct? I didn't really go I, to education. You got some kind of certificate. <laughs> yeah. Well, we in, in America, it's high school. And then from high school, what you do is you go to a good college or university. So I did that as well. That's what everybody was doing around me. And we're given a plan of, well, you go to first grade and then after first grade, you go to second grade. And then after second grade, you go to third. And it's very linear, right? But what we're not taught is that's not how business or passion or doing your own thing or entrepreneurship works. It's not linear at all. And so when you try to do these things and they don't work in a linear way, you can get very discouraged very quickly because, well, I was taught that after first grade comes second grade. And then after second grade comes third. And it's not A to B to C to D. It's A to R to L to S back to B and then to C again and so forth. And when it doesn't go in a linear way, it can be very discouraging to move forward. And that's what I found initially with following my passion. I was like, well, I'm doing what I want to do. And I'm really excited about this film company, but it's not working A to B to C to D. And I thought that was wrong or bad. So what I would uh, recommend to any person following their passion or any entrepreneur or any kind of thing is put yourself in the right environment or group. Because I felt that I had to do everything myself and run through the wall over and over again. And I had to put all the time in and I would not give myself breaks on the weekend because I should be working on this and so forth. And I did not make it fun. I made it like a grind Um, and kind of what Kelly was saying. She goes, I get up in the morning. Well, I get to do whatever I want. I didn't take that attitude initially. I was like, well, I have to do this and I have to do this by this amount of time. And I didn't make it fun. And I did not surround myself with other entrepreneurs and other people who are excited about what they were doing. So I kind of isolated myself and put it all on my back. After several businesses going through that, I started like, well, hey, I need support for this. And I want to be around people who are excited about what they're doing as well. If I'm talking to people who are working jobs or even working in their own businesses that they don't like or they're not excited about, that's not a good environment to be in. And what I learned is when I get around people who are excited about whatever it is they're doing, it doesn't even have to be a business. They're excited about a sport or, you know, or airsoft or whatever it is, that collective energy will move you forward. If you surround yourself with people who are upset about working at the fencing company, right, or at the <laughs> Tesco, or so forth, is that an exciting environment? No. It's, oh, we got to do another one, and I just got to get that paycheck and so forth. Um, so me, passion needs to be supported. It needs to be cheered on. It needs to be helped along the way by other people who are excited as well. So I think it all has to do with putting yourself in an environment or a group of people that can be like, yeah, hey, you could do that. Not, oh, that's risky or you shouldn't. Now, Kelly, I think you kind of said that with your parents of like, what are you doing? You quit a job that pays you money. So when I started my first business, I told my family and I was like, I got a film business and I'm going to make films and I'm going to write films. I'm going to direct films and it's going to be awesome. And what did they say to me? <laughs> you, what why, do you think? What, what are you doing? A job? What are you doing? Get back to yeah. work. Get a proper job. And I was like, but, but I'm going to do this. It's going to be great. And it wasn't because they didn't love me or didn't want me to succeed. It was just something different that they were not aware of. Right. And when you don't know about something, you don't have any education behind it. The first reaction is usually fear. And they wanted good things for me, you know, as their son and as their family members. And when they didn't understand what I was doing, that made them scared. And I didn't get that. I was just like, well, hey, can can you say good job? And at that time, they could not do that because they didn't understand it. And it was scary for them. They didn't want me to get hurt. 
They didn't want me to, you know, take risks and lose or not succeed or whatever that meant. So I was going to people for affirmation of my passion that could not do that because they didn't understand the world. So I was a little upset with that, but they were just advising me from a place of what's best for them for me. So I remember with my first film that got entered, I got uh, into the HBO US Comedy Arts Festival. This was the biggest festival for comedy films at the time. This was the year probably around 2000. And uh, my family, I have a very small family, but they came to support me to the premiere of this movie. I was 23, 24 years old at the time. And we had a sold out um, showing they had to turn people away at the door. I was so excited, so proud of this thing that I put together at such a young age. I had no idea what I was doing. I just made it happen because I didn't, you know, I was like, I really want to do this because I was excited about it. And I don't think if I had the knowledge that I had later in my film career, I would have done it because I would have been too scared of what I knew. And sometimes that knowing will hold you back. And just because I wanted to do this so bad and create something of mine so bad, I went through with it and took those hits. But at that premiere, I remember coming out of the premiere and um, people are congratulating me. It felt great. And my all my actors were there and my crew and my um, co-owners of my company with me. And this wasn't in a bad way, but I remember one of my family members came up to me and told me, hey, it was like, hey, there's a job opening at the post office you know, I think you should apply for it. And at first I thought it was a joke, you know, and I'm standing in the lobby of this movie theater and like a round of applause, like I'm on top of the world. And that came and, and I was just like, I'll never forget it. It was such a mixed emotion thing. Cause I could see what was happening around me. That was really positive and really affirming and supportive. And man, like, I was like, my passion paid off. And I just like, I can't believe this. But what now looking back at it, it had nothing to do with me. It was just that somebody else's fear who meant well and loved me and wanted the best for me could not still conceptualize that this is what I'm excited about. This is what I'm doing. Look what's happening around me. Look at the support I'm getting. And that kind of planted that seed of I need to be surrounding myself with people who are going for it. And can pick me up and say, hey, when it doesn't work out, we got you. You're still doing the good thing. So I would ask you, Kelly, in that kind of situation, and Ellen as well, I want to hear it. When you were in that group of people playing Airsoft and talking to them, how did that feel? Was it like time disappeared? Or was it like, hey, I'm going to make a call about another fencing contract? It definitely was not the latter. I can tell you that. Um, yeah. Well, Alan, Alan, know this. Um, just after I started the business, I went to America for six weeks, and ever since then, I've been there like twice a year ever since. For maybs more time than I should be there because I enjoy it a bit much. But I yes. think putting That's myself, same. yeah, honestly, it's a great country. I love it. I'm trying Damn to find right myself a green card, but shh, don't tell anybody. I'm sh- <laughs> Sean, I'm single. <laughs> But I think being around them, like putting myself in groups of YouTubers, people who do it full time, we all go through the same up and downs. Like one minute, everyone's like on top of the world and we're like, yeah, this is, video is doing really well. I'm like, oh, a blog post is doing well or a post is doing really well. And then like two days later, you could have, oh, this only got like so many views. And you're like, oh, why am I doing it? And that's when people need to be like, yo, you're bomb. Stop it. So I'm like, yeah, I am. I'll keep going. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't really cry yeah. at Instagram posts. <laughs> yeah, so do you have a community of people that do similar things within the airsoft world? I'm sure, and there's other products. And how do you work with them to keep each other moving forward and reminding yourself, like, hey, yeah, I'm doing cool stuff. This is my own business. I love doing this. Do you have that support network? Yeah, so my best friend in the states, um, she's a YouTuber full time. Her husband's a full time YouTuber, and then we know. A lot of other people who seem to be full-time YouTubers, but the Americans just want to be full-time YouTubers. I don't know. It's, it's wonderful. But I have group chats with them. And then when I'm feeling down, I'll ring them or just be like, oh, and they're like, no, you're doing a great job. Stop it. Stop it. I'm like, I'm trying. I'm trying. Yeah. <laughs> it all works out. It all works out. But I think definitely you saying that, that you need to put yourself in a position where people are around you to bring you back up. You definitely don't need people saying, oh, there's a job going here. You should do, do that. Because I would quite honestly punch them in the face. 
<laughs> That's cool. Yeah, I got to give it to Alan and Simon and the rest of the pop-up crew as well. I mean, I'm sure you felt it when you were at that Reading event, mm -hmm. but the magic in the room, when you get people mm -hmm. that are excited about whatever it is they're into, you know, and having that support group and having, you know, a leader like Alan or Simon um, saying, hey, guys, the roadmap's the same a business in airsoft, a business in film, a business in training and so forth. The mechanics of it and the outline is the same path. Are you in the right environment? Are you surrounding yourself with people who are excited about that? Alan, I, I don't know, maybe you can touch on that. How did you come up with doing that? Like using your passion to create groups of people passionately with the pop-up business school or even how did you get there, man? How did I get that? Yeah. Well, I think I was angry. That was my start. <laughs> and part of passion is you're passionate enough to change something. And part of my passion came out of anger about the bad service that were out there. And I was passionate about changing it. And I was also passionate that no one would ever have to go through the bad times that I'd been through. So I wanted to get out there and change the world. That was my passion. And so I built this business and I told people to come along and I promised them that I'd help them make money doing something they love. And then they turned up and I had to figure it out uh, and figure out how do you start this business? How do you do it? And at that time, I'd never launched a YouTube channel, but I'm very good at Googling stuff and figuring it out. And it is incredible what you can learn from Google. So I just got passionate about changing the world and getting out there and making a difference. And I flew out there with as much energy as possible, talking to people. And Kelly's right. You get knocked back, you get knocked down, and then you get back up again and you have another go. And it, what's changed over the years is the speed with which I got back up again. Now, the knockdowns, like Kelly said, last half an hour or maybe an hour, or if it's really bad, maybe a morning. Sean's actually seen me go through a knockdown recently where I got rejected for a certain project. Um, what was that, about 15, 20 minutes? I had a little soppy moment and questioned my soul uh, and then <laughs> moved on with life again. Yeah, but it was, I think that's such a good point, Alan. And Kelly, I'd, I'd ask you to speak to this as well. Like, we're all humans, right? And when something goes wrong, it's okay to feel a little bit disappointed about it. But I think the rebound time is the biggest thing. Like to me, business never gets really easier. I have a better idea of it. Um, I get better. I get more efficient. But I still get upset or down about things when things don't go well. But I just know that I can recover quicker and say, hey, I've been through this before. And I do have people that are excited for me. And I do bounce back a lot faster. And I think that's where the passion comes from. That's what I was asking. When you get down in that low point, if I were, you know, doing that administrative assistant job at the production company, I don't personally think that I could consistently climb out of the low points with that because I didn't have any excitement. I didn't have any passion. Some people can just power through. To me, willpower is finite. You know, it's an exhaustible thing. But if you have that thing that you're still excited about, I think that'll come through to people. You know, one of the great things when I met Alan, you know, it's about two years ago now, I think, or a little under two years ago, was that it came through to me that this guy loves doing what he's doing. And even if he's a little bit off on something or that doesn't make sense, I was like, I believe in him and I know his want is through and through and what he is teaching, he lives and believes and wants to help people. And if you give off that energy, people will get on the bus. Mm -hmm. People can feel it. I'm sure when you're playing in the games and you're talking about people about your kit, you know, they light up. We had a client. I think it was in Kent. She's had a lot of success. She's the bra boss, Alan. Ah, uh, yes. Getting the bra boss. Joanna. Yes. So, Kelly, have you heard of Joanna, the bra boss? Of no. Kent? Okay. I so this to. was, yeah. Tell you about her. Maybe she can work on a, a bra kit for you. Down. <laughs> so, I'm down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But we sat down, and she was struggling with. She had been selling different types of clothes for ladies fashion and so forth. And I was asking her, I was like, well, what do you really enjoy selling the most? What, what do you like? And she was like, well, I enjoy fitting and selling women bras. And I was like, all right, 
well, let's talk about that. And so she, she, I was like, tell me what your favorite product is. And she sits down with me and starts describing this jogging bra. And I don't know anything about any of this, but she is so well-spoken about it. And her energy was so great. I was just like, tell me more. Wait a minute. What about that? And I, I wanted to buy something. Right now, unfortunately, <laughs> she didn't have a product that she could sell me, but I can tell you this, I would definitely recommend her just because of the energy and the passion that she was going for. Like she had that aura of like, I know my stuff, I'm excited about this and her business took off, you know, because she concentrated on that one thing that she was super excited about and people were drawn to her. Mm -hmm. Like I was drawn to Alan because man, he was living it. And man, it was like, this is stuff is dead on. This is the way I want to live. I want to be around this type of person. And that's why I'm on this call today. You know, speaking of the passion part, if you follow that stuff, it isn't a straight line, but if you put yourself in those environments and you put yourself around somebody like Alan or like a Kelly, you know, or any, or the bra boss, like you put yourself in those environments and things will come to you. Yes. Mr. Donegan, I see you have your hand up. I absolutely love that. And I just wanted to add that one of the things we say on sales day is that sales is the transfer of enthusiasm from one person to another. And I think what Sean's just mentioned is the real kicker of this, that doing something you love means you have a good day each day. But the real exponential increase is that your customers can feel that you love it and they're attracted to you. I remember a quote from Zig Ziglar many years ago that for every person that you turn off by being too enthusiastic, there will be 10 more that will be attracted to you. And I really genuinely think that enthusiasm will bring people to you and help magnetize you in your business. Very good. I mean, I think that's speaking of what you were talking about, Kelly, with that company who said you're to this or you're to that. Mm -hmm. Right. I think it's something that's great with Alan. There's an example of that when you sent out, we have a, a marketing strategy that we teach in Papa Business School and it's called Chunky Mail. And Alan got very cheeky and he used little uh, <laughs> gifts that he would send out to potential clients. Um, I believe the first one was a dinosaur, right? A little toy dinosaur. And with a fun saying on it saying, hey, is your business stuck in the Stone Age? Are your clients or is your business going to become extinct? Something along those lines, right? Yes. And do your customers ask, do you think he saw us after your presentations? <laughs> it was Killing it. dreadful. Dreadful. But is everybody going to like that? No. No. But is it funny? And yes. <laughs> yeah. Is it funny? Yes. But the thing is like this to me, like I'm excited that you did not get that job because guess what? It wouldn't have worked out because you don't want to work with people who think you're to this or you're to that or something like that. So sometimes I really enjoy getting fired. <laughs> right. Yeah. So and if it's like if somebody's telling me, telling me how it is, of like you can't do this and you can't do that. I said, Watch perhaps, me. yeah, but yeah, but not, not in a bad way. It's like, okay, I'm, I'm not for you and that's cool. And, and I think if you can approach it that way, it's like you are not for everyone, but if you're being yourself, there will be people who are gravitating towards you. If you try to put on a show and act passionate, people mm -hmm. can feel that, right? It doesn't matter what level of education they have. Everybody can feel the, this person is in the groove or they're trying to put on a show for me to make me feel something like I, I know when I'm in that situation, um, it just doesn't feel good, you know, and I, I don't want to work with people that, that I'm not on the same page with that. So not everybody's a client and I'm happy when people fire me that I don't want to work with. I'm probably going to get fired after this podcast. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I will actually say that um, I was exceptionally, exceptionally skeptical of pop up when Henry first mentioned it. And it's the reason why I didn't turn up for so long, because he was like, yeah, we teach people how to make money with no money and just passion. And I'm like, I don't you know. Can't do that. Yeah, I'm you like, can't I don't do know. That, right? I don't know if that's going to work out, my dude. And then, I don't know, like, I turned up and Alan, you are genuinely one of the most fun people I've ever been around. You light up the entire room and I'm like. You know, you sat there and you're like, I can't get enough of what this person's saying. I've got no idea what they're saying, but I'm just, I'm, I'm in, I'm in, I'm sucking in. I think having you guys around is definitely a good thing. Because whenever it. something goes wrong, I'm like, Alan, <laughs> <laughs> help me. Well, I genuinely believe that it's my energy that infects people in the workshops. And if I am enthusiastic, if I am full of energy, if I believe 
which I do, like I believe this stuff, you can make money doing what you love, then my energy and my belief will infect the people around me and I can spread that. And I want to spread passion, energy, enthusiasm, because I think the world will be a better place if we are all doing something we enjoy enthusiastically and passionately. So look, there's something that I say consistently at Pop-Up that I'd love your opinion on. And I regularly talk to people about building business from your passion and they say, well, that's not enough. Da, da, da. And then I go, well, you could build a business doing anything, anything. You could sell Smurfs online. You can do airsoft. You can make movies. You can, you can do anything. Why would you ever choose something you don't enjoy? It boggles my mind. So if you look at it from the reverse, you know, sometimes they argue, don't pick something you're passionate about because that'll kill it. Well, actually, if you look at it the reverse, are you telling me I should pick something that I hate? Is that what I need to do? And I think, well, passion's not enough, but why would you ever start without it? I'd love your thoughts on that. And then I'd like to expand the conversation to, well, what else do you need other than passion? But let's start there. Okay. So the reason I think I have taken jobs in the past I probably wasn't too passionate about was because I was like, I've, I'm vaguely interested. Like I worked in the shoe shop because I like shoes. Um, I like to eat food. That's why I worked at the grocery store, I guess. Can't explain the fencing. Not at all. <laughs> Can't explain that. I was a fashion designer because I really, really liked clothes and I really wanted to do that. But I think as you've got to have some sort of passion to do literally anything. But I think only the things you have a lot of passion for will get you through really bad times. You've got to be excited about it. You've got to have that passion. So I think, why would you ever not build a business around your passion? What do you think? What else is there? Because having passion is great, but you can be passionate about something and never make progress. So what else makes up the ingredients that will help people be successful? I would say determination, resilience, and grit are what I think you need to build a business. So can you give us a example? So we talked about passion a little bit. So the grit and determination, what does that look like in context of your business with Femme Fatale? Can you give me an example of like where things looked horrible and I was like, this isn't working. You know, show me where the grit came in, where the determination, how did that work with that passion? When I first started, I got told that I'd never make money doing it and I'd never make money from the blog service that I use and all these things. And I think I'm quite tenacious and I've got a lot of grey about me. So I was kind of like, watch me, watch me as I flick my hair back and grab a glass of wine. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, just watch me do this. Um, and I think along the way, there's been people that just like, they like to throw that line in there every so often. Yeah. Just tell you that you're not good enough. I'm like, watch me. Because I'm, I'm in the arena. You bought tickets to watch me do this. What? Okay. With the determination, I think every time I've been knocked back for a contract or a campaign that I really wanted, I've been like, kind of like, all right, I need to do something else and I'll approach someone else. And then if that doesn't work out, I approach someone else. And it is, it is a bit like, oh. but at the same time, it's like someone could say yes. And then it's like margaritas. Yes. <laughs> That's how I feel about so that. what what gives you the confidence to keep going? Where does the grit come from? Like you do get knocked back, but what picks you up? Why do you think the next time it's going to be good? I think I believe in myself. I don't think at the beginning I did, but um, Alan definitely makes me believe in myself more than I believe in me sometimes. Because if ever I feel like I'm like, this isn't good enough, Alan, I'll be like, it's finished. Better than perfect. And yeah. I'm like, yes, it is. You're right. You're totally right. I don't know. Like, I just don't want to do anything else. I do not want to do anything else. And I, ref I refuse to give up on this. I refuse. This is not how my business dies. If something doesn't work out, I'll go for someone else. I don't want to sell fences again, you see. <laughs> <laughs> i think so, that's actually a really good point um a lot of people alan i'm sure you've heard this as well at pop-up schools and just folks that i work with and counts on the side well i don't know what i want to do i don't know what my passion is mm. and sometimes you can push that and people are like i just don't know uh sometimes i'll ask this do you know what you don't want to do right and kelly i think you know exactly what you don't want to do mm -hmm. to me it's at a place in my life and, the, and it's come through a lot of experience. You know, um, I've been in, in this world and in the entrepreneurial world for over half my life now. And it's never an option to me anymore. I was like, what's the alternative? Am I going to, am I going to sell fences? No, no, I'm not. 
So I have to move forward on the other side because I'm more excited about that. And at the beginning of my career on those things, there was more consideration. I was like, well, I, you know, I am capable. I can get a good job and I will get that paycheck. But there was always something like, ah, I, I can't do that, you know, because that it's not exciting to me. It's not something I can put my full self into. Um, so I think starting with like, if you're not sure what you want to do, make that list of things, you know, you don't want to do. <laughs> And that can be a starting place. Does that make sense to you? Or Alan, what have you crossed with folks, you know, at pop over and just general in your coaching when they say, I don't know what my passion is? Well, I think there's two elements here. The first one, you're exactly right. Have a list of what you don't want to do. The way the human brain is wired, it makes it far easier to say what you don't want than what you do want. That gives you a great away from motivation list. The second part is to start to think about what you do enjoy. So in your day to day life, where does time vanish? You start to do something and then you look at the clock and it's three hours later and you're like, how did I get there? That's a sign that you're in the flow. Because I think people take this word passion to mean when I've discovered my passion, the sun will shine through the clouds. I will be illuminated. Doves will fly over the top. There will be fireworks and I will have an explosion inside me full of energy. And they're looking for a sign that it is their passion. And that doesn't really exist like that. It's just something you enjoy doing. Where time vanishes, you're in the flow, you're having a good time. And I don't care what that is. For me, it happens when I'm creating a PowerPoint. Yes, I know that's weird, but I love, love creating a good PowerPoint. It happens when I'm building Lego. You know, I get a good Lego model and three hours later I look up and I go, wow, that was fun. And actually, if I ever get any time, I'm going to do the Gary Vaynerchuk wine model, but for Lego or actually pizza. I think those are two great YouTube businesses you could build almost <laughs> instantly. I've seen kids do it and make a lot of money on the Lego one. But it's something you just have fun doing and time vanishes. And for me, that's helping people. What are the roadblocks to that? So what if what if I were come to you and say, um, look, I really I really like, you know, airsofting, but I got to pay the bills. Well, then you've got a definite choice. You do need money to pay the bills. That is a fact. But building an airsoft business, if you're doing it at the weekend anyway, why not just get the photos and start? Like you're doing this. Most people are doing their hobbies anyway. So if you're doing it anyway, just start to turn it into a business, start to have fun with it around the salary. And there will become a stage where the side hustle is greater than what you need to live on. And then you can start to make a choice of whether you want to switch, whether it's worth the element uh, effort or not. But nearly everyone's doing it anyway. So just if you're doing it anyway, have fun with it. I agree. Kelly, what? Yeah, Kelly, when did that when did that switch change for you? Can you tell me the process of, wait a minute, I could do this. Yeah. And then what was the, the building to, hey, wait, this is what I am now. This is my business. I don't sell fences anymore. So I was... um. I was documenting more than creating in the start. I was because I was a complete beginner. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know left from right, I, I guess. But I was learning and I was documenting. And that is what got the following, I think, in the beginning, because people were like, oh, like she's just getting there. She's doing it. And I'm like, yeah, I'm doing it. Let's do this. So I went to the pop up. I got one sponsorship, the next sponsorship, sponsorship after that. And I was like, this is going pretty well, guys. This is going pretty well. Mm. And then eventually I was like, you know, when you look at your paycheck, and you're like, is this worth it anymore? Is it worth it anymore? <laughs> but I did cut back a lot. Everyone wants to do it really quickly. And they want, I don't know, they want to quit tomorrow after like two days of doing it. You can't do that. It took me like three years to get to the point of where I could actually do anything about it. But I was like, this would be a much quicker experience if I just cut back on other things, cut back, made the bill smaller. And then obviously the hustle, the side hustle was a lot greater. And I was like, right, buy fences. So I'd love to add one bit here because we were talking earlier about is passion enough? And one piece that's really hit me is I've seen people who are passionate, but they forget a key ingredient. They get excited. They go out there. They run after something and they keep doing it, but they keep doing it without ever getting better. And I think one of the key elements here is combining the passion and the energy with a constant desire to improve every time. And I think what we've seen with Kelly is she writes a blog post and she learns what works and what didn't, and then writes another one and writes another one. 
And it's that constant learning as you go. Passion is definitely not enough. But if you combine passion and energy and drive with learning and improving, you will make so much progress. It's unbelievable. So I think that compounding nature of drive and learning over time, over the years it takes to build those things, creates unbelievable opportunities and businesses. Yeah. Question for Kelly and Sean, whoever would like to start is great. How do you challenge yourself to keep learning and growing in what you're passionate about? I think I feel if I don't keep learning new social media platforms, new editing softwares, all those sort of things, I feel like I would be left behind. Like I wouldn't be ahead of the curve and I like to be ahead of the curve because then when the curve comes, I'm sat on it. I don't want to be back here when I could be up here. So I think that's what it is. That feeling of not wanting to be left behind or not being up to date on it. I want to be at the forefront. So how do you do that on a day-to-day basis, keep learning? Like how have you made that part of your DNA? Because we've talked a lot about this in the past, but how does this actually implement in your life? So at the minute, I am learning a new editing software. I downloaded it and decided to learn it. I locked myself in my room for three days. Did you have any wine? Uh, I've got a box, yes. Uh, box, awesome. A box, yeah. <laughs> That's how I would implement it. Now I, th- I kind of see things now that I'm like, I need to learn that and now we'll just learn it. I spent an entire morning learning how to make TikTok videos. <laughs> I love that. So Sean, over the years, how have you made sure that learning is part of what you're doing? Because you were in one of the fastest paced businesses ever with music, videos, film, that business changes so quickly. How did you make learning and growing part of your day-to-day activity? I would come back again to environment and specifically environment is the people that I'm spending my time with. If I'm around folks who are excited about learning and challenging themselves, I'm going to do the same thing because it's fun and you have a community that are doing the same, um, has the same energy and the same drive. If I am isolated and I don't put myself in those things. My my nature is not to push myself too much, but when it's in a way of enjoyable and like, hey, we're all learning, we're all moving forward together. And sometimes you don't have that option to be around folks all the times, but a lot of my environments and mentors and people that I looked up to are in books, are in podcasts and so forth. So like right now I'm reading this book right here. It's called The Good Neighbor. It's a gentleman named Fred Rogers. He uh, had a children's show that I watched as a kid in the 1970s. Um, was very ahead of his time about speaking to you kids about their emotions and how to deal with things as you're growing up. I'm not sure what the example would be of in the UK, but he was way ahead of the curve in learning and showing people how to get along together and so forth. So when I'm looking for a little punch of energy and if I don't have it in my immediate era, well, I go look for the book. I go look for the video on YouTube. I have playlists on YouTube. If I need a little bit of inspiration and learning, I will go to a learning playlist. If I need some joy in my life, I will go to my joy playlist on my YouTube, which consists of usually funny movies, little clips that get me in that space of excitement. And then I'll take that forward to the book I want to find or the person I want to talk to or getting online and talking to folks that are excited about the same things and trading ideas. So it all comes back to that, putting myself in the right environment and that environment of learning sometimes. And then there's a time of environment of doing. I think you can get stuck in certain places too. Like, well, I just need this next certificate and then I'll be ready to do something or I need to read this book or take this class and then I'll be able to do something. So there's different phases of it. Like I look to be in a place of recovery, learning, and then in a time of doing as well. And I think that is a person by person basis, but you need to be really aware of what environment you're in. That hour has absolutely flown by. I'm going to ask you in a moment both for your closing thoughts for the audience, because we have an audience full of entrepreneurs who want to build businesses, who want to make money doing something they love, or maybe they're already running a business, but it's not quite what they want. What would you say to these people about passion and uncovering theirs? What would your closing thoughts and message be? Let's start with Sean, then come to Kelly second. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and beat the dead horse of environment. If you want passion, surround yourself with passion. Get 
around people who are excited about what they are doing. You do not have to do this by yourself. As we teach at Pup Up Business School, business is a team sport. You will always need to be working with other people. Make that group of people, people who are excited and will support you and be along with the journey, not just in the good times, but when you need that pickup at the bottom, kind of like Kelly was saying, hey, get back in there. You can do this. We're working together. I cannot stress how important it is to surround yourself with the right folks. Get out there and meet the people who are excited about you and you are excited about them. USA. (laughs) I love that. My closing statement would be there is a saying, if you do what you love, you'll never work another day in your life. I would like to call BS on that. Um, I think even if you find your passion, you're still going to work really, really, really hard. And, you know, you'll take things super personally as well. I find that I take things super personally and I don't switch off because I'm working 24 seven because I love it 24 seven. But I think if you do find something you are passionate about, it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's Smurfs, Airsoft, ice cream, entrepreneurial endeavors, it will afford you the best life you could possibly ever have. And that's what I have to say on that. What do you get, Donigan? <laughs> I think my thought as always is you can build a business doing anything you want. Why would you ever choose something you don't enjoy? I just think that's the craziest form of insanity you can ever imagine. So pick something you enjoy, throw yourself into it, and it is unbelievable how far passion, learning, determination, grit, and resilience, like Kelly said, will take you. It's unbelievable. I am constantly amazed at Pop Up with the range of ways people make money. I cannot believe some of the stuff people do to make a living nowadays. And if they can make a living doing that, I guarantee there's a way for you to make money doing something you love. Thank you for tuning into The Rebel Entrepreneur. And I want to say thank you so much. Kelly, uh, where do people find out more about you, about what you're doing? Where do they go to find out more? So there's, there's many places. I am trying to take over the internet slowly, but surely. There is the blog, which is femfatalairsoft.co.uk or femfatalairsoft.com. You can get me on Instagram at femfatalairsoft, YouTube femfatalairsoft, and on Facebook is femfatalairsoft blog. But you can find everything you need there. Come join in the conversations. We do live streams. We do gaming streams. We do a lot of fun things. But yeah, come join. And can people find out where they can come and get shot by you? Absolutely. Yeah. Send some DMs. I do Q&As every week. Send some DMs in, comment, and I will let you know what's near you. Just let let me know your location. Let me know what's near you, where you should go. Yeah, just get in touch and we can get you on the field. Kelly, thank you. You've been a legend. And for the listeners, if you're not passionate about Airsoft, get out there and find out what you are passionate about. That's great. Sean, Mr. McHugh, thank you as always for your energy. To have someone like you doing the podcast with me is always a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, man. That feels really good. Thank you, Kelly. You are awesome. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you. That was the episode. The closing summary from me is you right now have the choice to build a business doing anything you want. So why wouldn't you choose something you love? Because you can choose anything, anything. It's unbelievable how people make money. So choose something you love. Yes, passion is not enough. Yes, you need more than that. But let's start with it. And what I really want you to take away from this episode is passion is a great foundation to build from. If you're excited about doing this, if you're full of energy and passion and excitement, then you can build from that and it'll keep you going through some of the tough times. If you don't even start with passion, how can you grow a business? And I think there's several bits here. Some of you are going, well, actually, I'm passionate about running businesses. And well, if that's what you're passionate about, it doesn't really matter what the business is. You're just passionate about business in general. Well, that's great. That makes it really easy. Launch anything and get going. If you're not passionate about business, well, then you better be passionate about the subject and the thing that you're actually doing, because that will get you to go through doing the accounts, doing the marketing and the other bit. All you can do, as Katie and Andrew did in episode three, they paired up and did it together. So one of them was passionate about the marketing and the business, and the other was passionate about the creativity and building the escape rooms. And I think that's the key here is start, use passion as your building block. So what I would love you to do 
following this exercise is if you don't know what your passion is, I want you to journal about it. I want you to write about it. What do you enjoy doing? What did you enjoy doing as a kid? What lights you up? What's get you going? And if you struggle with those questions, take action and start trying stuff. Get out there. Try writing a blog post. Try recording a YouTube channel. Go do some new things. Explore and say yes to things. The more you try, the more you'll uncover what you actually enjoy. But if you don't try anything, if you don't get out there, how do you know what you're going to like? So you've got to take action following this episode. Get out there, try stuff, journal about what you enjoy. And every day as you go about your daily life, make a mental note and write down when time disappears for you. And I don't care whether that's cooking, watching a TV show, doing anything. It doesn't matter. Note down where time disappears and that will start to give you clues about what you're passionate about. If you're already running a business, but it's not lighting you up, now's the time to start to think about transitioning to something you do enjoy. You don't have to close the old one down straight away if it's providing you with money, but you do need to start to transition and look for what you do enjoy. The one thing I wish for you is that you find something you love, because if you're doing something you don't enjoy every day and it feels like a slog, that's not an exciting life. That's not a life that I would want to live. So. If you're stuck in something you don't enjoy, start looking for what you do enjoy and then we can work out how to make money doing something you love. Thank you for tuning in to The Rebel Entrepreneur today. My name's Alan Donegan. If you've enjoyed the episode, if you've enjoyed what we're doing, then please leave a review, give us a message, send us some kind of thing or share this with some friends. If you've got a friend who's stuck in a dead end job, share this with them because there is a way to get out and there is a way to make money doing what you love. Please help us spread the message that you can make money doing something you love and it doesn't take debt. You've been listening to Rebel Entrepreneur with Alan Donegan. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes to get new, fresh episodes as soon as they've launched. To stay up to date with the rebellion, visit choosefi.com slash rebel. Thanks for joining the rebellion.